Hello, so this is the video of a talk I gave during Acoustic 2012 in Hong Kong. The topic of this talk was about acoustical perforated facings and there was a subtitle which was a synthesis study of theoretical and experimental developments. But finally, I've uh, changed my mind to a more accurate subtitle which is uh, what the porous the material theory can offer to acoustical perforated facings. This work has been realized uh, with the help of my colleagues Fabien Cheviot and François Xavier Beco at Medelis. First of all, I would like to mention the two assumptions behind this work. First, the, we only consider the acoustic flow through perforated panels or perforated fabrics. There is no seepage. And the second assumption is that we will stay in the linear acoustic regime. To model the acoustic behavior of a perforated facing or a perforated fabric, uh, three dissipative effects should be taken into account. First, there are the viscoinertial and thermal effects around the apertures of the facing. Uh, due to the small thickness of the facing compared to the wavelength, thermal effects uh, can usually be neglected in the audible frequency range. The remaining viscoinertial effects are usually taken into account by means of a lens correction called uh, epsilon. Yeah. In this side view uh, of a perforation, yeah, we can see the effect of uh, viscoinertial effect on the streamline of the flow through a perforated facing. If this facing is immersed in air, or if uh, a glass wool is put above it. So here we have a change in the streamlines and of course of the viscoinertial effects. Second, we have to take into account the viscoinertial effects uh, through the thickness of the perforated facing. This can be done by means of the dynamic mass density, uh, rho heck, which is uh, widely used in the field of uh, porous media. And finally, uh, structural effects of the skeleton, I mean the structure of the facing, can have non-negligible impact on its acoustic uh, behavior. If we neglect skeleton effects, uh, perforated facing, which perforation having a circular uh, section inside a rectangular pattern, can thus be modeled using the expression of the lens correction derived by Ingard in uh, 53. Here is the expression. Uh, corrected from some typos uh, in the article of uh, 53. For the viscoinertial effect through the thickness of the facing or the panel, we can use the expression of the dynamic mass density reported by Zwicker and Kosten in 49. So here is the expression. The model using this lens correction and uh, this dynamic mass density is the model uh, that Ma built in. Uh, 75 and modified until uh, 98. We can also uh, build a model for perforated fa panels or perforated facings with perforations having a rectangular section. Again, the expression of the lens correction was given by Ingard in uh, 53, while the expression of the dynamic mass density was independently derived by. Uh, Michael Stinson on one side and uh, Rowe and colleagues in 91 on the other side. For perforated panels with uh, steep perforations, the expression of the lens correction to account for this initial effect uh, around the apertures of the panel has been derived by Ingard again in 53. The expression of the dynamic mass density to account for viscoinertial effects through the thickness of the panel is attributed to uh, Maurice Antonibio. One point I would like to highlight in this presentation is the fact that since uh, 2007, we have a model to describe the acoustic behavior of perforated facings having perforations of an arbitrary shape. The expression of the lens correction, epsilon, was derived by Atala and Scar. They found epsilon to be a function of the perforation, of the perforation rate phi and the static airflow resistivity sigma and of the tortuosity of the material placed uh, behind or above the, the facing. Their work is based on the work by Johnson, Koblik and Dashen 
<coughs> who gave the expression of the dynamic mass density for such geometry in uh, 87. In the expression of the dynamic mass density, four parameters are needed, but it can be shown that for a perforated facing having a perforation with a constant section through the its thickness, the number of independent parameters uh, <coughs> reduce, is reduced to two. We can choose, uh, for example, the perforation rate uh, phi and the static effluvity sigma. In this case, only these only two parameters are needed to account for all these co-inertial effects through the thickness and around the apertures. As it can be uh, difficult to compute this value for non-woven fabrics, for example, I have developed with my colleague François Xavier Beco an experimental technique to estimate the perforation rate uh, phi and the uh, static fluorescivity sigma for a perforated facing. Our method relies on the measurements on the, of the acoustic impedance for plane wave. Uh, for plane waves at normal incidence uh, of the perforated facing backed by an air gap. From the estimation of these two parameters, we have tested the dynamic mass density ROAC and uh, of course the lens correction uh, epsilon. So far, we just have a single model, the one by Hatalanska, which is uh, which can be applied to a large range of materials such as non woven fabrics, non woven fabrics, or perforated panels. We can add the uh, motion effects of the skeleton of these materials by using the bio theory, which I used to depict with this drawing. In the bio theory, our material is composed with two phases. The fluid phase con modeling describes the, all the visco inertial effects uh, in the material and around its apertures, all we have seen so far. And the solid phase describes the motion of the structure of the perforated panel or the perforated uh, fabrics. Here is a mathematical uh, formulation of the bio theory uh, where we can see in blue the properties related to the fluid phase. In particular, we can see uh, rho -ec and uh, other properties which can be deduced from the perforated rate, uh, from the values of the perforated rate and uh, of the static fluoresistivity of the material. The properties related to the solid phase, the skeleton of the material, appear in brown. Of course, these two equations describing uh, the behavior of these two phases are coupled. So finally, mixing Atalan's GAR model with the bio theory, we end up with a model accounting for all these co-inertial and structural effects of the skeleton. This model can be applied uh, to woven or non-woven fabrics, thin or thick perforated plates, even corrugated ones, perforated shells, or other thin perforated materials. A publication uh, written by my colleagues Olivier Dazel, François Xavier Beco, and myself, which uh, described this model will soon appear in Acta Acoustica. To finish this presentation, I would like to show you two applications of the bio atala Gara model. The first application concerns uh, an absorbent shield under the bonnet of a car. So here is my car. And in black, you can see uh, the perforated fabrics placed on top of a glass wool. This sound package is used to reduce the noise produced by uh, the engine. Two configurations are, has, have been tested uh, with this black woven perforated facing. First, the facing is placed above a 20 mm air gap. The sound absorption for plane wave at normal incidence, normal incidence uh, as a function of the frequency is reported in grey. Uh, on this graph, we can see a bell curve, typical of low perforation rate facings. The prediction using the model by Bio Atalanska appears in blue. Measurement and prediction correspond quite well in the wall frequency range, in particular in the frequency uh, and the value of the maximum absorption uh, are accurately predicted with the model. In the second uh, configuration, the woven fabric is placed on top of a 20mm glass wool. 
the back curve represents the uh, measured normal sun uh, absorption coefficient. What's important here is the peak around uh, 1500 Hz. This peak is due to a compressional resonance of the glass wool. Uh, and of course, if the glass wool moves, the facing moves. Again, the Bio Atala Ansgar uh, model uh, accurately predicts the frequency and the value of this peak. Finally, the behavior of the two layer system is fairly well captured by the model in the rest of the frequency range. The second example concerns sailing tiles used to adapt the acoustic correction in uh, rooms. The system is composed with a perforated plasterboard panel, a non woven fabric, and an air gap. The sound absorption uh, for a diffuse field condition as a function of the frequency uh, and measure following uh, ISO 354 is reported in black dots uh, on this graph. And the prediction obtained with the Bioatalan's GAR model used uh, for the perforated panel and the non woven fabrics is reported at the range curve. Again, the behavior of the three layer system is fairly well captured by the model in all the frequency range. My last slide is about getting uh, design trains, in particular for diffuse field, using the Bioatala and SGAR model. As we have analytical expressions, these trains can easily be established. For example, a facing with a perforation rate of say 0 0.01 uh, and a thickness of 0 0.5 mm as an optimal uh, hydraulic diameter of perforation D of around 200 microns approximately. The optimal diameter is the diameter that implies a maximum value for the sound absorption in the audible frequency range. Uh, two points should be mentioned here. Uh, first, the optimal uh, diameter is a function of the square root of the perforation rate of the, uh, over the thickness uh, ratio. And second, the optimal diameter uh, only uh, slightly uh, depends on what is behind or above the facing. Um, finally, I would like to remind you that, uh, that Kirill Oshankov and I are awaiting your contribution to a special issue on Perux Media for the Journal of uh, the Acoustical Society of America. The deadline uh, for submitting your manuscript is uh, September the 29th of uh, 2012. Thank you for your attention.